The last section here of this uh, area we're going to talk about is what's called a periodic trend. And periodic trends can be helpful for chemists. They help chemists to predict uh, overall sizes of atoms and ions. And they can also be used to find the ionization energy and electron affinity trends. So imagine uh, here for a little bit that you're in my shoes uh, and I'm, you know, Dr. PhD running around campus and someone from like a Chem 100 class comes up and goes, oh, Dr. Russell, Dr. Russell, uh, which atom is bigger, uh, you know, uh, sodium or rubidium? Well, it's not exactly like I have the tables of sizes memorized. And yes, I have a smartphone and I can Google this kind of information and look it up. However, that looks kind of cheesy in my world. So instead of doing those kind of things, you can use periodic trends to make a prediction as to which atom is bigger and smaller. And you can also use it for telling which one has the bigger ionization energy and electron affinity, stuff like that. Now, these are just trends. They don't work super well. I'm going to let you know. They're not perfect. However, uh, when you're accosted by a lower, uh, lower chemistry class student and they want to know an answer, you do look kind of cool when you can use these. And again, sometimes just off the spur of the moment, it's fun to know. It is always better to look up the values because the values will tell you exactly what what's going on. These are just trends and they aren't always right. But again, if you know there's no internet where you are or something like that, then this is a nice way to do it. The trends basically come from the fact that as you go left to right on the periodic table, electrons are held a little bit more tightly together. And there's lots of reasons for this, and we'll very briefly go over some of them. Also, as you go top to bottom on the periodic table, the orbitals get larger. So for example, you go from 1s to 2s to 3s to 4s. And as the orbitals get bigger, the outer electrons are held less tightly to the center because they get farther from the nucleus. So for these kind of reasons, that's why the trends are possible. And uh, again, they don't work super well. There are exceptions, but on the other hand, if you're in a pinch, they work okay. This is kind of a version of how this thing works. Um, there's lots of different periodic trends you can think about. Um, but generally speaking, uh, we're gonna talk about the sizes of atoms, and we're also gonna talk about ionization energy and electron affinity. Now, electronegativity is gonna be something we're gonna use a lot starting in Chem 222. And so uh, that's kind of cool to see there, and we'll talk about that more later. But for right now, just realize that's not something we're going to do. Also, sometimes it's fun to think about which elements are most metallic or most non-metallic, and you can see how there's trends for that as well. But let's look here at what I'd like you to be able to do in Chem 221. The first of the periodic properties, which is important, is for size, sizes of atoms, okay? And the important thing to realize here is that size basically increases as you go left and down on the periodic table, <laughs> all right? So as you go left and down on the periodic table, the atom gets bigger. And again, you should absolutely double check these with actual values, but overall, size gets bigger as you go left and down. So if someone did ask you, which which atom was bigger. Uh, I think I said earlier sodium and rubidium, numbers 11 and 37. 37 rubidium is lower than number 11 sodium, so I would argue that rubidium is bigger. On the other hand, if you're curious between sodium number 11 and magnesium number 12, well, which one was bigger? Sodium is more left than magnesium, so I would argue that sodium is bigger. And again, these are trends and not perfect size will increase as you go right to left. So that's why, again, size will get bigger as you go left and down on the periodic table. Here's some actual graphs that show some kind of things. The left-hand side is the radius, so you can think about that as the size. And then on the bottom there, you've got like the shell number. So n equals one is hydrogen, n equals two is uh, lithium, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see how these get followed pretty carefully. So as you go down the periodic table, the atoms are getting bigger. And that's totally what we see when it comes to these. As you go left across the periodic table, 
it works pretty well, all right? You can tell in this example here, as you go from chlorine over to sodium, the numbers, which represent, by the way, picometers, you go from 99 picometers for chlorine to about 117 for silicon, and then sodium 186. So again, this is why, as you go left and down on the periodic table, uh, the atoms do generally get bigger. It's not perfect, but overall, it works pretty well. This is a list showing a lot more atoms than what I did just a second ago. Um, I showed you uh, this group going left and I showed you this group going down and that works pretty well. However, I hope you can see that there are exceptions. Tellurium and antimony down here. Antimony is more to the left, but it's smaller than tellurium. Tellurium is bigger than both antimony and tin. So again, these are periodic trends and they certainly aren't perfect, all right? You can also see that as you go left and down, uh, germanium, uh, GE, is smaller than arsenic. Uh, so is gallium is smaller than arsenic too. So this is by all means just a rough kind of analysis and it doesn't work perfectly. But overall, as you go left and down, the atoms do get bigger. If you compare sodium, boron, aluminum, and carbon, which one has the largest radius? This is the kind of question that you might be expected to answer. And again, the punchline here is that you want to look for the atom, which is most left and down. And by the way, just to let you know, I'm not going to give you two possibilities where one is more left and one is more down. So for example, um, looking here at my periodic table, boron and silicon, 5 and 14 would be an example of this. Like, which one was bigger, you know, boron or aluminum? Well, boron's more left and silicon's more down. I would not ask you questions like that. That's kind of dirty poker. If you have to guess, I would guess the lower one. Lower one's usually bigger than the upper one, but still, I'm going to keep it fair here. So for the kind of questions you're going to get to see here, for example, this one, you're looking for the element which is more left and down, and definitely sodium here is the most left and down, so sodium would be the biggest. Um, I would follow probably sodium would be biggest, aluminum would be next, boron would be after that, and probably carbon would be the smallest. Here's more trends showing the sizes, and you can see they're not perfectly going down uh, as you go from second top of the second period down. There's little bumps inside there, but again, overall, it works somewhat well. Anyway, these things kind of depend on how much you want to follow them. Um, sometimes I'm a little cynical about how they work uh, because they're not; they are kind of trendy. But on the other hand, again, if you're in the middle of a hallway, someone asks you a question, you can at least give an educated response, and it may not be perfect, but it gives you an idea. The sizes of ions uh, also follows the pattern of being bigger left and down, but there is an exception. There's a big difference between the size of a positive ion relative to the size of a negative ion, and let's talk about that here. Now, neutral lithium has three electrons and three protons, and the question is, does the size go up or down when you lose an electron? So lithium loves to be lithium plus one. Is lithium plus one bigger or smaller? and lithium plus one is certainly smaller. And the reason for that is that protons are pulling on electrons, all right? And if you lose one of the electrons to make lithium plus one, now you only have two electrons. You can think about protons as like parents and electrons as kids. And if you have one parent per one kid, like you do in neutral lithium three and three, that's a pretty good ratio. But man, if you've got three parents and only two kids, i.e. three protons and two electrons, electrons, those kids' electrons aren't going to be able to do anything. So they're pulled in tighter. They have less ability to go run off to the neighbor's house or whatever. I don't know. So what this means for us in science is that forming a cation, a positive ion, they're always smaller than the atoms to which they came from. All right. Protons are pulling more on electrons, kind of pulls it in. So you can see lithium there goes from 152 picometers. And by picometer, again, it's just a measure of how big the atom is down to 60 picometers, quite a bit smaller and stuff.
proton also has gone up and so the size decreases so some people like this better <laughs> all right um, the attraction has gone up so you have more protons pulling on the same number of electrons size decreases I like the parent proton pulling on kid electron but anyway work whatever works for you is totally fine now this is for cations positive ions positive ions always smaller than the atoms which they came However, a lot of atoms, like we've seen, like to become anions, negative ions. And if you add an extra electron to the same atom, you have the same number of parents, but now more kids. And if you've ever been in this kind of situation, if you are a parent, you'll know maybe what I'm talking about. But anyway, having more kids, it's harder for the parents to keep track of everything anions are bigger than the neutral atoms they came from because now those parent protons can't watch the electrons it's not the one-to-one -one ratio anymore so notice here fluorine going to fluoride the negative one atom you go from 64 picometers to 136 picometers the kids have a little bit more freedom to roam around because there's just not as many parents paying attention anions are always larger than the atoms from which they come cations are smaller and anions ions are larger. This electron proton attraction has uh, definitely changed and stuff like that so the size gets bigger uh, cool like that and the ion size is the same so what this means for ion sizes is that when you look at the periodic table generally speaking ion sizes get bigger as you go left and down just like the atoms but you can only compare anions to anions or cations to cations ha cations are smaller than anions so it's a little bit weird Here's some examples. The ones on the left, the purple ones, are cations, and those you can look at as left and down. So for example, you can see there that lithium, lithium plus, is bigger than beryllium two plus. Going left, the sizes get bigger. And as you go down with the cations, cesium is bigger on the bottom than lithium on the top. All right, so generally speaking and stuff, the ions get bigger. On the right-hand side are the anions, all right, and these generally also get bigger as you go left and down so like oxide is bigger than fluoride and at the bottom telluride actually telluride is not bigger than iodide oh tellurium you're always messing me up so again periodic trends here kind of messing us up wow these are actually pretty bad selenium is not selenide is not as big as bromide well anyway trend sizes ugh, see i'm getting cynical again just keep it together keep positive russell um overview generally left and down they get bigger obviously not all of them as i showed you two examples there but again if you have to guess and you don't have an internet connected smartphone where you can look it up on google then left and down works pretty well but you can only compare anions to anions and cations to cations uh, cations are always smaller than the anions they came from so it doesn't make any sense i hope that makes sense which of the following should have the largest radius? So here we have chloride, sulfide, phosphide, and argon. Now, if you count up the electrons, all of them have 18 electrons. They all have the argon shell. So this is a good time to use the left and down analogy because really we're comparing here the three anions and neutral argon. And the number of electrons relative to protons is going to essentially decide how big it is. But because this left and down thing works really well, if you're just comparing anions to anions, phosphide is going to be the biggest one. Phosphide has the fewest number of protons relative to the electrons, all right? Argon is one to one. The other ones have less than one to one ratios and stuff like that. So phosphorus, phosphide has 15 protons and electron, 18 electrons, et cetera, et cetera. If electrons are like kids, they can wander farther and that's going to make the atoms bigger phosphide should be the biggest one